With Phil Anderson on Alpe d'Huez. Phil, um, what memories does it bring back being here? Uh, a bit of sweet, actually. I've had some good ones and some bad ones. I said, never really had any bad ones. So, um, yeah, no, good memories. Was it, today, with uh, Alpe d'Huez, it's the third unclassified climate. Do they always do that when they're running here? Have you ever had like a clean run like up the valley from Grenoble without doing much and then hit up here? Uh, maybe in a time trial. Oh, well, it's in a time <laughs> trial, yeah. Uh, no, no. Been over Col de uh, Ornon on the other side here. Uh, come down off the Lotteray. Uh, Ornon's not a ball breaker though. No, it's only a cut two, I think. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, I don't know if I've come up straight up the valley from Grenoble, I don't think so. Usually it comes over the Glendon or or uh, one of the other calls. What's your best result ever been here? Uh, possibly top 10. I'm not really into, into, uh, into times or anything like that because don't ask me what my time is. Uh, I know I did it yesterday at like uh, you know, an hour five or something like that but I had two interviews on the way. <laughs> you must be the only person on the mountain who doesn't know their time up here. Yeah, and proud of it. <laughs> Over 13 tours, how many times have you raced up here? Oh, possibly six or seven, yeah, something like that, because it doesn't come up here every year, sort of uh, two out of three, something like that. But uh, no, it's a beautiful climb, you can get a bit of rhythm on it, and uh, certainly not the toughest climb, but it's just uh, famous because it's normally at the end of a uh, very tough day. Okay, uh, Phil, tell us about Neil Stevens <laughs> and uh, how he got his nose broken on Von Duke. Well, I was going up uh, Mont Ventoux in 94, I was on Motorola, and uh, I believe Neil Stevens was on Anse. And I was back in the bus, back in the uh, last group, in the laughing group. And uh, when you're back there in the group... Just, uh, just, tell, just tell, tell the Sooty Park viewer, how much laughing goes on in the laughing bunch? Well, there's not that much laughing, actually. It's more calculating. Calculating on how, how far behind the, uh, the lead group you are. OK. And anyway, uh, yeah, there wasn't much laughing. But uh, Neil was nervous that he was going to get eliminated, or the group was going to get eliminated. And when you're in the back in the laughing group, the agreement is that you all ride together because the moment you start uh, dropping riders, then the cutoff point is going to be at the back of the group. So generally, an ex the experienced bus will stick together if there's some sick riders there because back there in the in the in the laughing group, it's like a bloody hospital ward. You got guys with bandages around their heads. You got guys throwing up, guys bloody diarrhoea down their legs. It's, terrible not a nice place to be but anyway the idea is that you nurse everybody along and you ride together and the moment the pace is picked up guys get shelled anybody that's going to be shelled is going to be eliminated uh, because they won't throw out a whole you know they won't throw out a group of 50 however there's a group of five or ten they will so the idea is to ride up the mountain together take it easy and you know guys pushing each other and really trying to um, finish as a group anyway this particular day on the Vontu I think it was Eris Poli he was 25 minutes up on the main peloton at the bottom. But that's another story. Back in the uh, Mongol wagon that we were in, <laughs> buddy, uh, Neil was pushing the pace a little bit. And Raul Alcala, my teammate from Motorola, went up to, went up to Neil and said, hey, Neil, slow down a bit, mate. You know, like, this girl's, guy's getting shelled here and, you know, there's a bit, of, uh, a bit of sickness going on in the back here. Let's slow it down a bit. And Neil said, no, no, we're going to get eliminated. And started pushing and the group started splitting. And so, you know... Raul went up and appealed to Neil again and said, listen, we've got to slow down here. Anyway, they started calling each other names and before I knew it, they, was, uh, they grabbed each other by the scruff of the neck. And this is on a, a 20 kilometre hawk category climb similar to Alpe d'Huez and they just came to a standstill uh, by each other with their scruff of the neck and um, yeah, and suddenly they started uh, throwing punches. So I was off the bike, we all jumped off the bike, you know, big group started uh, separating them and I, I had Neil, I'm sorry, I had, um, had my, my uh, teammate Raul and I could just feel him relax and I thought, oh, okay, that's safe and, and I could see that Neil was, was calmed down a bit so we just let him go and BAM! If, he doesn't, if, uh, if Raul doesn't give, buddy, uh, give uh, Neil a big shiner and uh, broken nose, blood everywhere, you know, all of a sudden we're sort of looking around for the commissaires and, you know, they got commissaires and choppers on these bloody hills looking out for incidences like this, mostly for hanging on cars, but anyway, so we all, we all agreed to get back on our bikes and ride as a group from there onto the top, and ever since then, I think Neil learned a big lesson that day, how to ride in a, in a, uh, in a group etto. <laughs> oh, that's a terrible story. One from the back. Oh, fantastic. <laughs>
I can feel every bit of it. Uh, so the, uh, it was a whole bunch of skinny guys in lycra stand, uh, slipping around on 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 uh, cleats on on the bitumen. Oh yeah, trying to hold a bunch of other guys, to, a bunch of other skinny guys, a couple of skinny guys from hitting each other. That's right. It was a sort of small riot halfway up the last climb. Oh, thanks, Phil. That's funny. Gold.